Hi. Hi. Hey, Grandpa. Hi, Tim. And hello, everybody who's listening and maybe watching, too. Yes. Um, yeah, Timmy Tom show. And so it was pretty cool the other day. Uh, I We met some, oh, I met somebody who listened to us. And yes. it was the second time that I met somebody who knew who we were that I didn't know who they were. So uh-huh. that was kind of cool. It is kind of cool. That that means somebody between besides our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters are watching and listening. Exactly. I, he told me he's like, "You're Timmy from the Timmy Tom Show." And I said, "Yeah." And I said, "Are you sure you got the right podcast?" <laughs> <laughs> so he, he probably just does the audio podcast because yeah, video podcast. Somebody might say, "Oh yeah, I recognize you." Yeah. In fact, he he listened to us on the um, on the audio, so that was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's cool. I, I, it's rare that I run into somebody who says, "Oh, the Timmy Tom show." Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's I. Maybe I. I've known. Maybe I don't do anything that makes people even consider I would be on the Timmy Tom show. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, we're not that well known. That's okay. But um, well known by him. That's all we're, that counts. Yeah, we're well known by the one who counts. Exactly. But um. I was reading this. This is really cool. I like this book. It's called The Daily Light. Uh-huh. And uh, it just has scriptures in it. And I, I, I love it because um, it put some things together for me the other day that I hadn't thought about. And in the morning, it just has scriptures. And uh, this is what it said. It said, Let us draw near with true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Mm-hmm. And he says, we have boldness and access with confidence through Jesus to, to the Father. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Now, I know that scripture, uh-huh. but they added a scripture here at the beginning from Esther that added a lot of uh, layers to it. Ah. Esther, for those of you who don't know, um, was a Jewish woman during the Persian kingdom and she, they, they were trying to find a queen to rule over the, the Persian kingdom. Mm-hmm. And well, to be the wife of the to king. To be the wife. And Esther was entered into a beauty contest, and it turned out that she won. Well, Haman was an evil guy, one of the king's advisors, and he didn't like the Jews, and he wanted to destroy all the Jews. Mm-hmm. And so Esther asked for prayer, and she decided that she was going to go tell the king about Haman. Well, God delivered all, you know, delivered the Jews and Haman ended up getting his because God's not mocked. Right. But Esther had to go in and show bravery and courage to go ask the king and to go tell the king. And why was that? Well, because the king in those days, uh, you weren't allowed to go see the king unless he called for you. And even if he called for you, if he didn't raise his golden scepter, Mm -hmm. you were put to death. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't the kind of thing where you could go say, I'm going to stop in and say to the king, Hi, king, how you doing? And exactly. Goes, no scepter. Whoops. Exactly. Woo. Even, says, even to the woman who's, who could possibly become his wife? Yeah, even to the woman who would become his wife. So it didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter From who the who lowest you were. slave to the highest ranking official, yep. if the king didn't put his scepter out to you, which is a way of saying welcome, yeah. you were put to death. Mm-hmm. Wow, especially yeah. if he didn't call for you in the first place. Yeah. If he, if he said, hey, Tim, I want you to stop by my place about 4 o'clock tomorrow. I want to give you some instructions. That's one thing. Yeah. But for Tim to show up the next day uninvited. without being called, uninvited. Even if me. you're his spouse. Yeah. Yeah. Even, yeah, even if you're an important person. Yep. Okay. Well, Esther was taking a real chance, wasn't she? Yes, she was. But the king held out the golden scepter, and then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. Ah, And so she found favor with him because God gave her favor. But I thought combining that scripture with the scripture in Hebrews that says, therefore, we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may receive grace and mercy to help in our time of need. I thought it was so cool because not we can't approach God on our own. But Jesus says, Jesus is that golden scepter, if you Mm -hmm. will, that God has said, you can approach me through his righteousness. And he says, I hold that out to you all the time. Yep. There's not a time of day where God says, nope, sorry, I'm not holding it out to you right now. There's not a time of the week or maybe you did something. No. 
as long as we approach him that way, we're welcome. I thought that was so cool. It is cool. Especially, as you said, it doesn't make any difference what we've done or haven't done this week or this day. It's not like we have to be in the perfect spot yeah. and the perfect attitude, the perfect behavior and everything, and then it's okay. And you know, the king, he asked Esther, what, what, what do you want? Even up to half of my kingdom, I'll give it to you. Right? Wow. He wanted to know what was on Esther's mind, what was so important. And I think the Lord is the same way with us, whether it's small, whether it's big. He wants us to come to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have that right as his children. Also, Esther was a believer who was involved with the king, so she was involved in government. Ooh. So it was Mordecai. Politics. Mm-hmm. Politics. Mm-hmm. So as we're going through all this time, we can go to God's throne and find grace and mercy to help in our time of need. Yes. Yep. Anyways, I was reading that, and that, I just thought that, that was fantastic. I think that's great. That they, that they took scriptures from two different places and showed how they went together. Yeah. One amplifies the other. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what we as believers are supposed to do when we read scripture because, you know, God didn't say, okay, guys, number one, <laughs> number two, number three. Yeah. You know, it's like God's dealing with this here and it reveals this attribute of God, yeah. this part of his character, and this reveals this part, and this reveals how this happens and so on. And if you go to those things and are able to read those and put them together, he's allowed our minds to be able to see yeah. all the, thre- the threads that go back and forth through all these things and how they all work together. I think of like a, a movie where they're trying to figure out who done it, uh-huh. and they have the red strings from this picture to this oh, yes. picture, and this the, picture, and it's all like yeah. intertwined. Yeah, that's how it is with scripture. You got something from Genesis, and then it matches up with you know with John, and then you got Leviticus, and then Hebrews, and then you got Daniel and Revelation, and it's just all intertwined. Yeah. in the middle is Jesus. Absolutely, that's a good picture for that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Me too. I'm going to use that. <laughs> that's great. I preached last Sunday. Okay. What did you preach on? Uh, I, I preached on a, a section in Revelation 20 where it says, After the thousand years, Satan is released for a short time, right. and he deceives the nations, mm-hmm. and the number of them is like the sands of the sea, and they surround the encampment of the saints and the beloved city. But God sends fire. And devours them. And devours them. And Satan yeah. is thrown into the lake of fire mm-hmm. where the beast, beast the Antichrist, and the, and the false prophet are. So uh, some, someone had, had brought up and said, if, if during this kingdom Jesus is ruling on the earth, why in the world would Satan be released and why would people yeah. follow him? Yeah. That doesn't sound right. How can that happen? So I thought... That's a good question, Lord. I'm going to explore the scriptures and, and I'm going to talk about that mm-hmm. and see if I can't open it up in a way that reveals to people how this happens yeah. and yet reassures them that if they have made their personal commitment to Jesus, that they will not be amongst those who follow Satan. Yeah. And I, I think God has allowed me to approach it in a way that it will explain to people, you are safe. There's, there's going to be something else that occurs that yeah. produces this other group of people. Now, to clarify, this thousand years is after the rapture, after the tribulation, and when Jesus comes back to rule and reign on the earth. Right. And this is something that those who enter into this kingdom will have children, their children will have children, and those children by themselves will have to make a decision for Christ. Well, it's true. Yeah. You, that's the, the, the conclusion of this. And But first I'm going to talk a little about the king, that kingdom itself and what its structure right. is and where it comes from. But this is the kingdom that in Acts 1, during the 40 days mm-hmm. that Jesus was on earth after dis- his resurrection, the disciples said, they said, hey, you're alive again. Yeah. Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this point? And he said, no, it's not for you to know the timing that God has. In fact, I don't know. Only the Father knows. Right. But he, he didn't indicate in any way that there's not going to be a kingdom. And there are many other passages, especially Old Testament passages, that show that there is a kingdom. Right. And so this is in a thousand-year kingdom that Jesus, when he returns with his saints... They rule in the kingdom, mm-hmm. 
but Jesus rules the entire earth. But it's not an iron-fisted rule where people don't think or can't feel or can't right. do things. And what's happened is all those who are in active rebellion during the tribulation are destroyed. But people during the tribulation, Scripture tells us there is an untold number from every nation, tribe, language, and people right. who, who come to believe in the living God. Now, we know that, that the Antichrist is going to take those people and kill them as quickly as he finds them. But on the day when Christ returns and destroys the Antichrist's uh -huh. forces, how many people will there be who have made a decision who the Antichrist hasn't caught yet? They go into the kingdom, but what kind of people are they? Believers. They're, they're, well, they are believers, but yeah. they're in human bodies. Mm -hmm. Those of us who come back with Christ are, in, are immortal new bodies. resurrection bodies. Right. So we got two kinds of people in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Those of us who have resurrection bodies, who and I, those bodies function just like Jesus' body functioned when he walked through walls but ate fish at the seaside. Yeah. Human beings come into the kingdom and they're believers, but they have children. Mm -hmm. And their children have children. And their children have children. In fact, it says that during the kingdom, during this thousand years, if anyone should die at a hundred years old, they would be cons the people would go around saying, "The poor Man, he just, child. Yeah, he just died. He's, He's a... only a child." Mm. It would be very rare, and most people will live for the whole thousand years. Yeah, that's what happened to the people before the, before Noah and the flood. Yep. And they Noah and his time. sons also lived. Noah lived six hundred years. Yeah, Adam lived nine hundred thirty years. Right. All those people lived a tremendous amount of time. Right. It, apparently, in the millennial kingdom, which is what the thousand years refers to, it's the Latin word for thousand, mm. people will live extremely long lives. We're told that in the Old Testament, when those people lived long lives, they had children. Yeah. How many children can you have in a thousand years? Well, you if can God's have a given lot. you a body that doesn't get old and decrepit. Yeah. You can have a lot of kids. Yeah, and they can have a lot of kids. So there's going to be a whole a lot, lot of kids. people at the end of this kingdom. There will be there literally could be billions of people on the earth at that yeah. time. Each one of those people who is born into the kingdom doesn't automatically become a believer. Right. Even though the environment will certainly be one that encourages yeah. that. Because God doesn't have grandchildren. He doesn't. Every single human being has to make that own their own decision and surrender to Jesus. Right. And there will be many who will outwardly follow the rules, but inwardly will not do that. Mm -hmm. Those, I believe, will be the, the ones who follow Satan at the end of that period when he's released for a short period. I always use that scripture because I think it highlights the, um, the, the baseness of human nature. Because it, it, it's like, how can people see Christ in all of his glory and still deny him? It's the same way that the Pharisees saw Jesus perform all his miracles and denied him. It's the same thing that people today can live in his world, mm -hmm. see how complex the human body is, see how complex the conception is of a human being, see how he has made everything because the heavens declare the glory of God. And they say, yeah, there's no God. Yep. And definitely he's not the Christian God. <laughs> I mean, you really have to be blind and willfully blind to recognize that. Because he says he puts eternity in the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. And so he's not left himself without witness. He's not hiding. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I will come into him and opens the door. I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Mm -hmm. And so he's knocking every single day on everybody's hearts. They are either choosing to turn up the volume inside so they don't hear him knocking or they're just refusing to, to answer the door. And that's what it comes down to. Yeah, that's a, that's a time. Anyway, that's that's what I'm. Well, that's good. That was my my theme for yeah. Sunday morning. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, it's um. The gospel is the only thing that revives mankind. It's what our founding fathers understood. It's what um, the people who God inspired to write the scriptures understood, because there's no. There's nothing that man can do, no type of social program, no type of incentives that will ultimately change the heart of man. 
The only thing that's going to change the heart of man is a personal relationship with Jesus. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And and the great thing is, it's offered and it's open to everybody yeah. and anybody. Because he holds out that golden scepter to everybody. That's right. I, you, you, that made me think of the thief on the cross. You know, some people have said, well, you know, if I, if I only get myself cleaned up, I could be good yeah. enough and then Jesus might accept me. Thief on the cross didn't get down and do any good things. He didn't clean himself up. He didn't do anything. And he was on a cross. Yeah. And you didn't get on the cross for doing nothing. Yeah. You did something. Uh, but what did Jesus say to him? He said, today you're going to be in paradise. Why did he say that? We didn't see the thief do anything. He couldn't get down from the cross. He couldn't scratch his nose. But he said something. Yeah. He said, Lord, whoops. He didn't say, hey man, yeah. dude, fellow guy. He said, Lord, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Right. So he recognized Jesus was Lord, that mm. he was a king, that he has a kingdom, and he's going to the kingdom. Yeah. Nobody's stopping him from setting up the kingdom. Being on the cross is not stopping him. All that was included in that one sentence that the guy said. Mm. And Jesus said, today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Right. Based on that, because it showed that he was recognizing who Jesus was and the power and authority yeah. that he had. He also confessed his sin because he said... Look, I'm I'm suffering justly for what I've done. When, when the guy on the but other cross this kept man saying, has done nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah, he said, "Get us get us down from here." You know, if you're if you're really the Christ, get us down from here. Yeah, and the right the, the first thief said, "What are you talking about? You and I are here because we deserve to be here." Yeah. So yes, he recognized the debt that he had. So good, so good. Yep. Well. For those of you guys who are listening, today, be encouraged that God holds out his scepter, if you will, his righteousness through Jesus to you Mm -hmm. so that you can approach him. Amen. Yep. And we'll see you next time on the Timmy Tom Show, guys. Yep. God bless you. Bye-bye.